These days, there's just one thing on everyone's mind in the music industry. Is Jay-Z's title the wave of the future? Or is the new streaming service all washed up? Oh, get it? I like yeah, that. Yeah, wave, <laughs> washed up. You know. We're here to answer all those questions and more is music journalist and songwriter Dimitri Ehrlich. Welcome back. Hi, how are you? Okay, so you? title is the name on everyone's lips right now. Why is that, Dimitri? Why is there so much focus on this streaming site? Well, I think the backstory was kind of a good thing, which was to have an artist uh, finally own and step into this business, which many people think is the future of the way music's going to be distributed. Right. So, you know, having someone who's really widely loved and respected like Jay-Z, that seemed like a good thing. And his basic mission was to pay songwriters better, more fair royalties. So there were two good things going in his favor, you know, from the beginning. And actually, the early days of the rollout, he had like 800,000 subscribers in the first month that looked pretty good. Right. But I think there were two problems. One was the way he marketed the rollout was he used Beyonce and Nicki Minaj and a lot of, you know... Madonna. Yeah, multi, yeah. multi-millionaire, very successful artists. So that doesn't... I think consumers don't really care if, you know, millionaires aren't getting paid. It, it doesn't look... You know, it's like champagne on the yacht and we're complaining about our royalties doesn't really mm. go well with right. average consumers. Or champagne on the yacht and we're complaining that it's not yeah. Dom Perignon. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. That, right. that's sort of a hard sell for most people. And I think the other thing is functionally the user interface was um, was worse than clunky. A lot of people really thought it was awful. So, mm. you know, and also in contrast to Rhapsody and Pandora and Spotify, the one distinguishing factor about Tidal was you have to pay. It's, it's $10, $9.99 a month for the basic and $19.99, I think. So, you can't use it for free, you can't get a free sample, and then when you put that money down, you're getting a less than wonderful user experience. Um, suddenly, he plummeted to, he's not even the top 700 of the iTunes apps, and meanwhile, while he attacked uh, Pandora and Rhapsody, or Spotify, they are both number three and four now, so it sort of backfired against him, and you know, he's fired his CEO, he's fired 25 st- uh, employees already, and he's apparently, Jay-Z himself and Jack White are literally calling subscribers personally on their phones mm-hmm. and being like, you know, we're sorry, we're working on it. But it's a pretty... Uh... Okay, but are these just the normal problems of a startup company? Yeah. Because Jay-Z's been tweeting, going on rant, saying he's just a startup, give him time, you know, hang in there. And other people are saying it's failing, it's over. So what's the real story? Well, I think, first of all, most startups are not run by Jay-Z, so he can't really... <laughs> he, can't, he can't play it both ways. He can't be like, I'm just a humble little guy starting up in my fruit mm-hmm. stand on the street. You know, he's, right. he's, he's a very experienced... He's Jay-Z. He's a, mm-hmm. He is a CEO. He's got business experience, artist mm-hmm. experience, a huge profile. So he's obviously invited that scrutiny by, by virtue of his name. Um, you know, he also has, I think, a lot of goodwill, and there's equity in his name and, and his brand. People love him, and so I think he has much more in his favor than if this was just a startup that sort of, you know, bungled it. But um, we'll see. It's a very, you know, it's a tough market. Plus, he's also competing with Dr. Dre and Apple. Uh, Apple beats their, um, I think, their number. They're in the top 20 right now. About so, you know, there are three mm-hmm. three very established names that he's competing with. Another artist owned, Jimmy Iovine and uh, Dr. Dre run Apple Beats. So it's it's not going to be easy, you know, and it's um, it's so a very competitive market. The rollout was clearly very flawed. Is there a way that he can sort of salvage this, or is it done, in your estimation? I don't think it's done, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, the, the fact that he himself is calling people shows how seriously he's taking this, because he's a busy guy, and that's, you know, a time-consuming way to address 800,000 consumers. Not that he's going to call every single one, but um, I don't think it's a lost case, but I think they're going to really have to hustle to... You know, even if this hadn't happened, it's, it was a tough competition because yeah. Spotify is huge already. These, you know, these other companies are up. They're running. People like them. They work well. So if your main angle is we're going to pay better royalties, which I just don't think I care as a songwriter. I think it's great, but I don't know if the average consumer they want to walk in and have an entertainment experience that's great. They right. probably they're not really that concerned. Like if you see a movie, you're like, is this a good movie? Was it easy to get tickets? You're not like, is George Clooney getting paid fairly? <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the fact that you're a songwriter. Do you receive royalties? From I do, and you know, I've had some of my songs have, have had millions of plays on YouTube. That you know, they're on Spotify. Um, I've kind of stopped looking because it's a little sad when you get the, <laughs> the royalty statement. So I've been writing professionally for ten years, and when we get our checks, I mean, actually, my publisher, they're all fighting in in Washington. They're trying to change copyright laws because copyright laws um, for songwriting was, were based on you know a hundred years ago, and right. technology's changed, distribution has changed. So we're sort of in a period of the wild west. I, I am optimistic that we'll figure out a fair way, and mm-hmm. people love music. But right now, what I always tell people, it's like if you owned a furniture store and someone found a way to walk into your store and walk away with your stuff, you know, how that's basically how we feel. It's like mm-hmm. this is our our living, and it's also you know, I'm we're not necessarily trying to, you know rip anyone else off, but we also just want to get paid fairly for our, our work. And mm-hmm. I think it's not just songwriters, it's, you know, film writers, television writers, authors, um, anyone creating intellectual property is sort of, 
digital the digital revolution has suddenly it's become very easy to like replicate and distribute. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so what's your final um, prediction on title? Do you think it'll stick around or will it? I would bet on Jay Z. He's an amazing entrepreneur and an amazing character, and I just think his the force of his personality and will will probably succeed. I don't know if he'll necessarily be, if we met again in a year from now, I don't know if title will be at the top, but I think they'll be in business and I think they'll they'll be serious contenders. I, I have faith in him that they'll figure it out. It's, you know, it's, a, it's an ugly, messy beginning, but Obamacare is kind of working, so, you know, <laughs> after that, we'll... So anything's possible. Yeah, anything's <laughs> exactly. possible. We're all insured, so. You know what, he probably should have brought out people like you, because mm. I think the average consumer would have uh, identified with you more yeah, and, I think if instead you were... of saying a Madonna. Yeah. Yeah, like if you were a guy who said, wanna, you know, people want to meet you to have some money in this pocket. And also, if you were a songwriter who said, hey, listen, you know, I wrote a song and it, ha it sold, it was played 19 million times on Spotify, and here's my check for six dollars. That's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. and it's, it's, this is what happens if the songs are played on YouTube 33 million times, and you know, you're getting checks that are a couple hundred bucks. Whereas, had that been radio spins or you know, purchases of singles, you'd basically be retired. We have to find some fair balance, and you know. Like That's I said, true. I think it's early days, but yeah. the good news is people love music, and once we figure out, I think most people will pay a fair price once we figure out how to how yeah. to have a system that makes that easy. Well, once it's figured out, please come back and tell us all about yeah. it. I'll all be right. coming back in my gold Rolls Royce when I. Oh, yeah. I like that. I like that. Jay Z <laughs> just gives a call to Dimitri, <laughs> right? doesn't he? Yeah. Give him a call. He should be on his advisory board. <laughs> Thank you so all much right. for clearing all that up for Thank us. You. All right, we'll be right back with more Rise Three Hundred and Sixty.